All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Conan of Samaria. This is book number two in the Ace Edition Conan books, which came out in the uh, late 1960s, early 1970s. It was a volume of 10 Conan books compiled by L. Sprague de Camp and Lynn Carter. These were the books that were available on the shelves during the 1980s when I was buying them as a kid. And I've got all of them here. You can see they all have a great either uh, Frank Frazetta cover or Boris Vallejo cover. They're all great. There's 10 in the set. Uh, now, maybe you saw my video I did about a year and a half ago where I showed you my entire collection of Conan things. Well, you can go watch that video if you want. That was like a broad overview of Conan stuff in general. And now we are doing each book individually, an in-depth look at each book. Uh, I did the book one not long ago. Now we're to book two. Um, let's start with the uh, cover. Let's start with the cover. This is a great cover illustration by... Frank Frazetta. We've got Conan here fighting the frost giant Vikings. It's even the uh, cover they used for the comic book of the same name, the frost giant's daughter. And uh, we will talk about that in a minute. You know, it's interesting. Um, these, uh, you know, Co uh, Robert E. Howard was only 30 years old when he passed away. I mean, he was alive from 1906 to 1936. And you have to understand, in such a short amount of time, he, w he wrote these Conan stories and literally invented the sword and sorcery genre with these Conan sorceries. It's amazing. The guy had a short life, but less, left such a, a legacy and impact on literature, you know. I mean, sword and sorcery. Tolkien is known for epic fantasy. Robert E. Howard was known for, you know, sword and sorcery. Now, these ten books that we're going to be going through one at a time and reviewing in depth, these ones that were, they're, they're all the Conan short stories written by Robert E. Howard compiled into books. Now, I will say about 15 to 20 percent of the stories were not written by Howard. They were actually written by L. Sprague de Camp and Lynn Carter as sort of little fill-in-the-gap stories to the overall sort of biography of Conan where there was like massive time gaps in his life that Robert E. Howard left. Lynn Carter and L. Sprague de Camp wrote a little story, plugged it in. Those stories are also in here. And, and, and when we talk about each story individually, I will yell, let you know which story was written by Howard, which ones were not, and that were written by the other guys. Now, Sprague de Camp and Lynn Carter did an amazing job in these stories of mimicking the writing style of Robert E. Howard. It's almost like they don't miss a beat. It's almost like you cannot tell who was um, writing which stories and which ones. Unless, unless you knew, and, and, but, they, but they let you know. They let you know which ones were written. But if you didn't know, you wouldn't know. So let's talk about these books. I mean, they've got some great, great little illustrations throughout. There are some magnificent little illustrations. Like this one here. You know, one of the stories reads kind of like a Western novel, and that's represented there with that great little illustration. Um, there's a no one more. There. I won't show all of them to you because they're a lot, but um, I will show you some of my favorites. I really like that one, too. Anyway, let's read. Let's set Conan the Barbarian up. Let's figure this out. So, I'll just read from the introduction. Conan was a gigantic barbarian adventurer who roistered, brawled, and battled his way across half the prehistoric world to rise at last to the throne of a mighty realm. The son of a blacksmith in the bleak, backward northern country of Samaria, Conan was born on a battlefield in the land of rugged hills and somber skies. As a youth, he took part in the sack of Aquilonia, frontier settlement of Venarium. Later, he joined the band of the Aesir and raided into Hyperborea. Conan was captured by the Hyperboreans, escaping from the Hyperborean slave pen. He wandered south into the kingdom of Zamora. For several years, he made a precarious living there in the adjacent lands of Corinthia as 
and Namidia as a thief. Um, tiring of this star starvation-like existence, Conan enlisted as a mercenary soldier in the armies of Turin. For the next two years, he traveled wildly, widely and wildly, as far east as the fabled lands of Meru and Katai. He is also refined. He also refined his archery and horsemanship skills, both of which had been at best indifferent up until the time of joining the army of the Tunarians. It is in this book that we um, meet Conan in the Tenarian service. So in book number one, which I reviewed earlier, in my in-depth review of book number one, that was kind of a synopsis I just read of book number one. So now we get to meet um, Conan as he um, adventures into book number two. Um, now, if you want to know what the Hiberian Age is and Sumeria and stuff like that, there is a map at the beginning of this book. Great little map. Um... And a little, and a little introduction about um, Hiberia. You know, it takes place eight thousand years. Um, it takes place a total of twelve thousand years ago, eight thousand years after the sinking of Atlantis. This is when Conan is alive and doing his adventures. So it's on Earth in a European slash Middle Eastern setting, but uh, back in the uh, Hiberian Age, which was twelve thousand years ago. So that's a long time ago. Back when Atlantis had just sunk. Anyway, let's start with the first story, The Curse of the Monolith. Um, this one is uh, one of those stories written by DeCamp and Carter that sort of bridges the gap between book one and book two. It's a, just a little story of um, uh, Conan li living in the ranks of the army, rising in the ranks of the army, and uh, visiting a monolith. It's not that interesting per se. Then we get to book number story number two, The Bloodstained God, which is one of the Robert E. Howard original books. It takes place in ancient Afghanistan, and he, this is where he sort of um, abandons the army, Conan abandons the army, and goes off to become a, a, a once again, to seek treasure and to become a full-time thief. Great story. I really like that one. The Frost Giant's Daughter is the third book, or the third story in this book, and it's probably one of Robert E. Howard's most well-known Conan stories. In fact, they did an entire comic book just on the Frost Giant's Daughter. Um, as you can see, Frost Giant's Daughter. And it's got, you know... Um, the Frost Giant's daughter right there. Conan is, uh, you know, he's traveled back to Samaria. He wants to go raiding and thieving with his old pals. A pal, not pals, pals. He wants to go raiding and thieving with his old pals, and he gets seduced by the Frost Giant's daughter. Things go haywire. He has to fight the Frost Giants, of course, which are represented gr just absolutely spectacularly in that illustration. Um, then we get to the lair of the ice worm. Um, Conan is now 23 in this story. Um, he's bored of the North. This is a Lynn Carter Sprague L. Camp story. It's not a Robert Howard original. Um, he's bored of the North and, he, and Samaria, and he wants to travel south uh, and do things. And it's one of those stories that bridges the gap and, and tells you why he travels south. Because next we get a... Um, well, that one actually, um, I want to talk a little bit more of that. That skirts, oh, so as he's traveling south, I, I was really liked this novel by, I really like this little novella in here by L. Sprague de Camp and Lynn Carter because it takes Conan past a lot of different sights and sounds and monsters and creatures that he adventures of. At one point, he skirts, sort of skirts by a very legendary glacier. Um, I, I like that because my book, the Forgetting Moon, opens on top of a glacier. And so I was kind of, it was kind of interesting to see how uh, these guys uh, wrote uh, the glacier scenes and things like that in comparison to how I did it. It's also about how Conan's uh, horse dies in a, fount with, uh, in a fight with mountain men. Uh, and um, the, this, that story almost reads like a Western novel. Um, now we get to the Queen of the Black coast which is another great story this one is one of the robert e howard original stories um uh, conan's now 24 years old 
So the previous story, The Lair of the Ice Worm, was a bridge between his 22nd year and 24th year. Yeah, that's right. Um, this is uh, Robert E. Howard's pirate uh, story. It's a, basically a very, very awesome take on pirate adventure in the Conan the Barbarian times. I really liked it. The Veil of the Lost Women is the next story in this book, another Robert E. Howard original. Um, after the tragedies, he... Okay, on the pirate ship and during the... There, he suff Conan suffers a lot of love and a lot of loss and a lot of tragedy. So after all of that, um, he vows to never set foot on a sailing ship again. And so he ends up uh, joining, uh, and he ends up being adrift, cast adrift in Africa, and he ends up an, uh, joining with an African um, warlike, the, they're called the, uh, the Bamulas, the Bamula tribe, very warlike tribe, he joins them. And then in the next story, The Castle of Terror, which is uh, written by DeCamp and Carter, they talk about how... Um, Conan gains like a, a massive, uh, dangerous, dangerous amount of power in this uh, Bamula tribe, and he's forced to flee into the jungle by himself, and then he ma meets the snake people, and then, um, which leads us to the final story in the book, which is told by Howard, uh, and uh, it is a Robert E. Howard original story, and that is called The, the uh, Snout in the Dark. And it is about his adventures um, fleeing the jungle and um, the snake people and stuff like that. So uh, we mentioned all the stories in there. It's just great. It's Conan in his young 20s. Um, and I really like this. I, I mean, it's just like I said, it's brilliant writing. The writing in this is brilliant. If a bit of writing advice for those of you that come to my channel for writing advice, study the way Robert E. Howard Lynn Carter and L. Sprague de Camp write these stories. Study the word choices that they use. And if you want your um, fantasy novels to feel like they're set in the medieval ancient times, just take special note of the word choices that they use in these books and, and, the, and the combination of words they use in these books. And, 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 and if you kind of mimic that, you'll really get that flavor to shine through in your own writing. Um, so let's give this... Uh, 9.5 out of 10, and uh, we'll be doing book three soon.